Good morning, good morning, good morning. In my pink fluff. It's far too cold to not be in my pink fluff. It's matching my cheeks beautifully. <laughs> good morning, hope you're well. And I would like to invite you to, hello, I'd like to invite you to have a think about unhinging your brain to consider what it might be that you unconsciously get enjoyment from or feel fulfilled by the thing that you don't want. I had to think very slowly for that one. <laughs> Explain this properly, Claire. I don't know about you, but I have a tendency to go, oh, why can't I have the thing that I want? Oh, woe is me. Why does this keep happening to little old me? <laughs> I'm not that bad anymore. But I did enjoy... I did used to enjoy a good moan. <laughs> I used to work. I used to be employed. I won't name names. Protect the guilty. <laughs> it was a big open plan office. And it wasn't... <laughs> I'm going to pick my way carefully through this. <laughs> it wasn't the most positive of atmospheres. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, we all were a little bit resentful of the, uh, the higher ups. We all felt a bit hard done by, and it was a big open plan space uh, and there was a kitchen. So I think quite a few of us enjoyed congregating and having a good old moan about the situation. And I said I enjoyed it, and I don't think that's a lie. I think part of me, I know part of me as I think about it, I know part of me really, really enjoyed having that moan for probably a number of reasons. I think possibly the main reason was because it brought me closer to the group. We were, we were all one. We were bonding over our moaning. And I think everyone enjoyed it. The thing with moaning, <laughs> as enjoyable as it is, is that uh, nothing changes. Nothing happens. All that was happening was we were just standing around or sitting around grumping at each other and getting more and more wound up by the whole thing. But it didn't actually change anything. It didn't result in more pay. It didn't result in less hours. <laughs> it didn't result in a huge shift in the, uh, the uh, organisation higher up. None of that. So I'd like you to think about what it is you really enjoy doing in your life you get some kind of satisfaction or fulfillment from in some way, no matter how weird or perverse it will be, and it will be weird and it will be perverse. That doesn't actually change the situation you're in. I'd like you to get curious as to why you enjoy it. What do you get from it? And I'm going to swing this round to, um, to lack and scarcity as I am shortly to launch Abundance Alchemy in January. It seems pertinent to swing it round to lack and scarcity. And I'd like you to consider if you are struggling with not enough income, if you have debt, I would like you to consider what it might be 
that you really enjoy about that? I know it sounds weird. It sounds weird. But I bet you've never considered it before. And if you want something different, you've got to do something different. So I'm going to invite you to suspend your disbelief at me with this one. And start to get curious. This is not judgment. This is not judgment. This is curiosity. You can inspect a Clouseau this. <laughs> what might it be about lack and scarcity that you enjoy, that part of you really enjoys, that that gives you something that makes that part of you feel fulfilled. I shall share mine first. <laughs> Cause this, I had, a, I had to think about this. I had to think about this. I'm still thinking about this. This is still a work in progress. And I came to the realization that there is a part of me that really, really enjoys the attention I get when I go, oh, I've got no money. I can't pay rent. Or whatever it might be. I can't afford my coffee. Ah! <laughs> There's a part of me that really enjoys the attention because I am fortunate enough to be surrounded by beautiful, loving people who will rush who will rush to my aid. Not necessarily to bail me out. Well, that'd be nice. <laughs> but to give me attention. Oh, no. Oh, my God, Claire, you'll be okay. You can do this. I've got you. We love you. And part of me is like, yay, yay, I'm loved. And I didn't like that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I didn't like that realisation. <laughs> that made me feel a little bit weak and pathetic. Which is what makes it a weird, perverse, and I'm going to go out there and say taboo desire. And as I thought about it more, I grew up in a pub. I know. And my parents are amazing. Still are. But they were busy all the time. All the time. Well, probably not all the time, but it felt like all the time. And I'm an only child. I know. It's all just stacking up now, isn't it? <laughs> Grew up in a pub, only child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was on my own a lot. And I think there is a part of me that is still craving the attention that little shadow self me felt I wasn't getting when I was growing up. And it's discovered that if I bitch and moan, if I wail and gnash my teeth and throw my hands up in the air and declare how poor I am, how unfair it is, I get attention. The thing that I want. So whilst my conscious brain is saying, crikey, this scarcity, this not having the income that I want is awful and I'm a huge failure. For my unconscious, the scarcity is a fucking huge victory because I am getting the thing that I really want, which is attention. So I'd like you to consider the thing that you keep getting in your life that you don't want. I'm going to invite you to really seriously sit down and think about this. And it takes a little bit of getting your head round. But the reason I want you to, to discover what it is, is because once you've discovered what it is, and it might be several things, I have, I have several bits of shit going on around scarcity and lack. But once you discover what those are, 
you can accept them. Oh, and this is where I get a lot of resistance from clients. The moment I say that, they're like, what? 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 I don't want to accept it, Claire. This is a, this is a bad way of going about getting what it is that I want. I don't want to keep doing it. If I accept it, I'm going to keep doing it. Which is a fair assumption. I get where you're coming from. I thought that too. <laughs> the reality is that weird, perverse, taboo enjoyment that you get from the thing that you say you don't want. Because it is weird and perverse and taboo and no one wants to admit it, we repress it. We push it down. Deep, 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 deep. Push it down. And we deny that it's there. And then it festers and it drives, it drives our behaviours, it drives our thoughts through the unconscious to get the thing that we really want. And the issue with that is the unconscious is a 95% shareholding. Your conscious mind only has 5%. That's why you keep getting the shit that you don't want. It's because there's part of you that really enjoys something about it. By bringing an acceptance to that, I'm not saying you accept how it is you're doing it. What I'm saying is you accept the fact that part of you feels like this is a win. That actually for part of you, this is huge fulfillment. I suggest that you allow your conscious mind to enjoy it as much as your unconscious mind does. Because the minute you do that, you move from a state of disempowerment of this is, why is this happening to me? Why does this keep happening? Why can't I get the thing that I want? Why do I keep getting the thing I don't want? You move away from that and into a state of empowerment, into a state of, holy moly, actually, I'm just really fulfilled right now. Which shifts the energy. It also stops you from resisting the, th the thing that you think you shouldn't have, that weird, perverse, little taboo enjoyment thing. Words fail me. <laughs> Stops you resisting it. If you stop resisting it, it doesn't persist. It dissolves. And once you understand what it is that it gives you, then you are able to find a better way of getting it. But you've You've got to accept that it's there first. You've got to accept it first. And by accept, accept is not the same as allow. Accept is not the same as allow. If you are, as an example, if you are in a relationship and your partner is emotionally abusive, you accept the state of your current reality. You accept the fact that you are currently in a relationship where your partner is emotionally abusive, but you don't allow it to continue unless you want to. Accept is not the same as allow. So bring an acceptance to that weird, perverse little desire. Release the resistance to it and allow yourself to then consider a better way of getting the thing that you want so much. But it starts with finding out what that with a weird, hot, perverse, taboo desire is. So have fun. <laughs> I throw the gauntlet down on a Friday morning. <laughs> But this is really, really key. And this is what we're going to go through in Abundance Alchemy in the second month. Because this is the part that so many people don't think about. Because it's hard. It's hard. It is hard. No one really wants to think about what they might enjoy about the thing they say they don't want. It makes us feel a bit pathetic and weak. And, you know, I didn't like it. I didn't like discovering what it was that I actually really enjoyed about scarcity. 
But did it put me in a better position to deal with it? Hell yeah. Did it bring me a massive amount of understanding? Yes. Has it started to dissolve as a result? Yes. Am I seeing more abundance because of it? Yes. Ah, it's just incredible. But this is the part most people don't think about when they are manifesting. The alchemical formula is first you must dissolve the current thing to then coagulate the bits to create the new thing. That's the transformation. I like the analogy of caterpillar chrysalis. Caterpillar turns itself to caterpillar goo. It then rebuilds the caterpillar goo into a beautiful butterfly. But it has to dissolve first before it gets the transformation. And most of the time, most people just try and get the transformation without the necessary dissolving of shit first. Considering what it is that you really, really enjoy from the thing you say you don't want is part of the dissolving process. There are at least two things you need to get really, really clear on when you are dissolving. One is that what do I enjoy from the thing I don't want? The other one is what am I so afraid of? What is my deepest fear about getting the thing that I want? Unless you can get your head around that and bring an understanding in and start to accept that that is the current reality for you, you're going to struggle to manifest consistently and well and accurately. Maybe at all. So, happy Friday. <laughs> Your challenge for the weekend is I'd like you to, to just pencil out a couple of chunks of time. It doesn't all have to be in one sitting. But just give yourself the space to sit down and consider this. I also recommend a really, really amazing book by Carolyn Elliott called Existential Kink, which dives into this. It is a fascinating read. But over the weekend, carve out some chunks of time. Allow yourself to just sit and be with this without judgment, just with curiosity and see what comes up. Ask yourself the question. What am I getting that I really, really enjoy, but think I shouldn't <laughs> from the thing I don't want? What am I so ashamed about? Do I have to be ashamed of it? What if I don't? So have a little play with it and let me know what comes up for you. Let me know what comes up for you. Any questions? Drop them in comments. Drop in comments. Um, what comes up for you because I'm super nosy and I like to know these things and have a lovely rest of your Friday have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you on the other side doodles